sci-fi spacey stuff. I am on a four-night dedicated astrophotography trip with the Astro Bros. After an unplanned but mesmerizing first night under the pristine dark skies of La Palma, we woke up the next morning after three hours of sleep. Not entirely refreshed, but looking forward to what the coming nights would bring. We started our regular 40-minute hairpin bended trip through the cloud base up to the spectacular volcanic mountaintops again. Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to day number two of our La Palma trip with the Astro Bros. We are now at uh, Pico de la Cruz. We are scouting possible compositions. Kuhn is uh, checking out some more precarious ones than we are, but still looks pretty good. Uh, last night we had a pretty good night. We had uh, three or four hours of sleep max, uh, but we're still feeling good. We're feeling refreshed. Um, Especially we're feeling enthusiastic about the night. It's again crystal clear. The views are insane here. Just looking forward to the night. So uh, let's uh, see what compositions can be ahead. So we thought we were at Pico de la Cruz, but that was not the case. We have arrived now at Pico de la Cruz. And let me tell you, this might be the best spot we have scouted so far. It is insanely beautiful. We have so much flowers here, yellow, purple, it's all green. Uh, we have rock formations. Um, we can shoot compositions here from the beginning of the night till the end of the night. Um, yeah, it is. Speechless, just wow. <laughs> so yeah, I think we will come here tonight. We might have to plan a little because possibly we will not be the only ones. And it's not that large of an area. And we might end up here with the five of us also. So maybe we'll shoot first the um, foregrounds and then the sky shots later. So we'll just go with the flow and hopefully have a relaxing evening. It's a bit, uh, bit of a hike here, but uh, I can handle it. <laughs> Nice. After some proper scouting during daytime, we had a plan. Just after sunset, we returned for what would hopefully be another night full of dark skies and bright stars. But first, we planned to capture something special. Welcome back to Pico de la Cruz, or the sort of mountain before Pico de la Cruz. Behind me, I think you can see the ridge line, or it's actually <laughs> there behind me, where the telescopes are. Um, we uh, plan to shoot the zodiacal light, which should be above these telescopes in about half an hour or so, I think. And after that, we'll start to climb up to Pico de la Cruz and start shooting the stars. So, looking forward to a night of clear skies again. Let's go. The zodiacal light can be seen as a cone of light in the night sky. The sun is reflecting particles of a dust cloud in our solar system. It is thought to originate from passing comets. The zodiacal light follows the ecliptic, which is also the path our sun and surrounding planets are in. It is best visible around the equinoxes, just after sunset or before dawn. Wow, so it's uh, now almost SO darkness, not totally, maybe half an hour. We're trying uh, to shoot the zodiacal light. I started at 50 millimeters, but that was way too tight. Then I switched to a horizontal 60 millimeters, shooting a kind of discomposition there. And after that, I switched to vertical because the zodiacal light, I don't know if you can see it on video, but we can see it almost until in the zenith. It is insane. Really nice. Just when we thought we would pack up and start to climb to Pico de la Cruz, we were surprised by something pretty bizarre. So, what's brighter, the zodiacal light or that Starling train that's coming up? <laughs> I cannot imagine that I've seen Starlink brighter than this before. It's insane. 
I really don't like satellites, but it still looks kind of cool. I don't know why, but <laughs> sci-fi spacey stuff. Cornet is including Starlink into his photo. <laughs> Time is also waking up. And a collaboration between uh, Cornet, who is shooting Martijn there at Pico de la Cruz. Martijn is silhouetted there, and uh, you can see Ro of Yuki rising there. And Martijn is running back after this, and he's going to shoot a deep scape at 135 millimeters, I think. So, uh, yeah, really curious how that shot turned, uh, turns out. <laughs> Super cool ID. So uh, we have climbed up to uh, Pico de la Cruz. Uh, Kuhn and Sean are already shooting here. Uh, before it gets crowded, I'm uh, going to shoot some foregrounds. Uh, you can see here there's a kind of uh, peeping hole <laughs> through, uh, through the valley where a cloud inversion is happening. Beautiful stuff. Uh, the Milky Way is rising beautifully there. It isn't yet uh, through this gap wh what I'm shooting, but it will be at around 2 o'clock, 2.30, I think. Uh, but hey, I'll have this composition in the pocket already, so uh, we can relax a bit more. Awesome stuff, man. In the end, with the exception of this shot, I was able to capture the rest of the images on this evening from the same tripod position at the same time. To me at least, I always feel just a bit more happy about the results with this technique as opposed to shooting the sky from another position. So Corneille has uh, also arrived, he uh, was helping Martijn with his row of Fuki deepscape shot. I hope it turned out well, yeah. but right now I see his camera really close to some uh, dead wood, uh, which uh, probably acts as a leading line. But yeah. how are you going to get all that stuff in focus? <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, do a focus stack. Uh -huh. um, so I'm going to focus from the beginning of the wood to the end of the wood. Yeah. And normally uh, you would do it uh, by hand, with just turning the focus ring a little bit every time. But yeah, yeah. The most of the new cams have the automatic uh, focus stacking, which also works at night. So what you do is you just light put, yeah. uh, your out focus at the, at the beginning where you want to uh, shoot. Yeah. Then light it up a little bit so that it can focus. So that it can out of focus, yeah? Yep. And when it is in focus, oh, I was a bit too late right now, but normally you remove your light and now it will automatically focus all the way to the back of the wood. And you can just sit back and relax yes. and enjoy the stars. Enjoy the stars. I have to do anything more. Awesome, that's a thumbs up. So we are a bit puzzling here because we are now with five people here at a very small area. So we have to communicate really well if uh, someone is shooting a foreground of two minutes, for example, or in this case, if I put on that red light uh, so that I don't shine into Martijn's uh, foreground shot, etc., etc. But hey, uh, with a bit of puzzling, there are a lot of compositions to be had here. I just also did uh, a, a single tracked sky, I did some stacks, uh, a lot of dead wood, which is beautiful somehow, uh, leading lines, uh, rock formations, Milky Way lying flat on the horizon, the sickness region there behind me. It is just super insane, super quiet here, except for us, of course, but uh, I can accept that. Um, yeah, <laughs> there was Corne shouting of enthusiasm. Um, I'm going to put that light out again and uh, see if I uh, can make some uh, extra B-roll without my video lights on. So, uh, beautiful stuff, as I've said a lot, I think, in this video. <laughs>
So uh, it's about one o'clock now, I think. Um, we've shot various compositions here. Uh, Corne is doing a, a tracked and stacked uh, panorama, maybe uh, with H Alpha as Koen did. It looked beautiful. The details in those H Alpha stacks are just <laughs> bizarre. Sean there is just chilling a bit, looking to the stars, and I think I'll also going to do that. Uh, maybe I'll put on my uh, tracker uh, because I don't have that many track shots yet, but you know, I'm also just in a very relaxed mood and I think that's important. Um, in the meantime, I have said how dark the skies here were for about 10 times also, I think. So I thought, why not take a measurement with the star, star quality, the sky quality meter. So I'll put it up and we'll see what it does. Takes longer than normal, that's good. 21.5 so I expected maybe a little little bit darker but still it is darker than yesterday and maybe that's because we have a cloud inversion going on so that the light of the cities here around which isn't a lot gets dimmed a bit so 21.5 it goes to 22.0 and that means pitch black so I think we found the right spot <laughs> I was ready to sit back and enjoy the stars next to Sean. And then Martijn kind of convinced me to try and shoot a panorama while there was still plenty of time. And I am grateful he did. So I've uh, arrived at the top, top, top of Pico de la Cruz. It's the rock formation. Um, and I've uh, shot a uh, panorama. It's uh, yeah, not a really strong foreground or something, but it really gives a beautiful view of the nice grand vista here. So I did it uh, tracked, not stacked. It uh, would take too long. Now Kuhn is also doing some uh, tracked uh, or stacked shots, I think. What are you doing, Kuhn? Oh, just single shots. Single shots. <laughs> So, which is totally fine here, by the way. If you make single shots, stacked, uh, tracked, they all look so good. I uh, was very tempted tonight to also just make some simple uh, single shots or short stacks instead of setting uh, out the star tracker because it just looks really good. So, and it might open up a little bit of yeah, sort of creative freedom because you have a little less stress and yeah, it's, it's, it's just nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I think I'll go down, um, maybe I'll do one more shot or something, but uh, if we stop here I would be very very happy uh, for tonight, so uh, let's see how it goes further. Okay, so as you can see, uh, we are about to uh, pack up and leave the Pico de la Cruz and go back to the car. Uh, we've had a fantastic night, I think. Uh, really relaxed. It was a bit puzzling around in the beginning, but uh, we got used to it because we were with five people at a pretty small location. The advantage, I think, of a small location is that you can just yeah, stroll around, really get to know the area and also take the time to relax, which was really good tonight. So uh, yeah, night two of La Palma, I think big success. On to night three. Thank you guys for watching and I hope I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>